This presentation does not relieve the user operator from the responsibility of obtaining, reading, and fully understanding the applicable operators and safety manuals provided by the manufacturer. The operators and safety manuals and a copy of the ANSI Responsibilities ANSI A92.5 should be located in a plastic compartment located on the turntable. If these documents are not available, they must be obtained and kept with the machine. JLG Industries Incorporated, manufacturer of JLG Aerial Work Platforms, presents Boom Lift Safety, featuring the S-Series Straight Boom and A-Series Articulating Boom. The purpose of this presentation is to provide the operator with the operating procedures essential for the promotion of proper machine operation for its intended purpose. The operator of the JLG S and A series boom lifts must not accept operating responsibility until he or she has been instructed by a qualified person. The operator's and safety manual has been read and understood, as well as having operated the JLG boom lifts under supervision of a qualified operator. In addition, the operator and employer are responsible for complying with federal, state, local, or provincial rules and regulations covering the proper use and operation of this product. If there is a question on application and or operation, contact the Product Safety and Reliability Department at JLG Industries Incorporated at area code 877-JLG-SAFE or 877-554-7233. While the walk-around inspection and function checks in this videotape appear to be time-consuming, once an operator becomes familiar with these procedures, they can be completed more quickly. We'll break this presentation into several parts. This will include the daily walk-around inspection, controls and daily functional check, safety precautions, and emergency procedures. Prior to the operation of the JLG S and A series boom lifts, let's complete a walk around inspection. These two machines are representative of JLG S and A series boom lifts. Your lift may be a different model, but the inspections are virtually the same. The walk around inspection is a required practice for any operator, and an equipment check must always be made before any use. Complete inspection procedures are outlined in the operator's manual. So let's begin the inspection of a Model S series boom lift, just like the manual specifies. On each of the items being checked, make sure there are no loose or missing parts, that they're securely fastened, and that no visible damage exists in addition to any other criteria we mentioned. The platform assembly. Ensure that the fasteners that hold the platform assembly together are in place. Ensure that the gate latches properly. Ensure that the foot switch is in good working order, not modified, disabled, or blocked. Ensure that the fly boom nose section under the basket level cylinder is free of debris or any other obstructions. Platform control console. Ensure the switches and levers return to neutral and are properly installed and that all placards, decals, and control markings are secure and legible. The rotator. Make sure it's properly secured with no signs of leakage. The rotator motion control valve. There should be no signs of leakage, unsupported hoses, or damaged wires. Check the articulated fly boom if so equipped. Check the dual capacity limit switch. Properly secured, no damage to the switch, the arm is free to move and free from dirt and grease. The power track. No loose, damaged, or missing parts. The horizontal cutoff switch. Properly secured, no damage to the switch, the arm is free to move and free from dirt and grease. 
the drive hub. No visible damage or no signs of leakage. The wheel and tire assembly should be properly secured. No loose or missing lug nuts or no visible damage. The drive motor and brake. No visible damage or signs of leakage. The turntable lock should be operable with no visible damage or missing parts. The auxiliary power pump. There should be no signs of leakage or no damaged wires. The swing drive motor and brake should have no visible damage or no evidence of leakage. The right side hydraulic system components should have no evidence of leakage or no damaged hoses or wires and all components should be secure. The manual descent. There should be no signs of leakage or visible damage. The hydraulic oil supply should have the recommended oil level in the sight gauge and the cap in place and secure. The hydraulic oil breather, the element should be in place, not clogged, and no sign of overflow. The ground controls, ensure the switches are operable and properly installed and that all placards are secure and legible. The fuel supply, the fuel filler cap should be secure and the tank should have no visible damages or signs of leakage or any spilled fuel. The turntable bearing and pinion. There should be no loose or missing hardware and properly lubricated. There should be no signs of loose bolts or looseness between the bearing and the structure. The LP gas tank, if installed, should have secure fittings, brackets, and hose. All hood doors and latches should be in working condition and properly secured. The tie rod and steering linkage should have no loose, missing, or damaged parts. Ensure the tie rod end studs are locked. The steer cylinders should be properly secured with no signs of leakage or no visible damage. The spindles and cotter pins retaining the king pins should be properly secured with no signs of leakage. If equipped, the oscillating axle cylinders, oscillating axle, and oscillating axle lockout valve should be properly secured, no signs of leakage or unsupported hoses. Be sure the engine air filter element is clean. Make sure the battery has proper electrolyte levels, the cables are tight with no corrosion, and always use eye protection. The left side hydraulic system components, including the hydraulic swivel, should have no signs of leakage, no damaged hoses or wires, and all components are secure. The engine oil supply should be to the full mark on the dipstick with the filler cap secure. The muffler and exhaust system should be properly secured with no signs of leakage. The engine tray pivot should have no loose or missing parts or no visible damage. The frame should have no visible damage. There should be no loose or missing hardware. Check both on the top and underneath. The boom sections. Be sure the wear pads are secure. All cylinders, the rod end shafts, and barrel end shafts should be properly secured and properly lubricated. The platform pivot pin should be properly secured and properly lubricated. Also, see that the platform attach bolts are secure. Check under the machine for loose or missing parts as well as any fluid leaks which may indicate damage to the machine. Since the S and the A series boom lifts are configured differently, we'll go through the differences of the daily walk around inspection of an A series boom lift. First, the dual capacity and horizontal cutout limit switch. The boom must be raised to properly inspect these switches. They should be properly secured with no damage to the switch. The arm is free to move and is free from dirt and grease.
The tower boom sections and the main boom sections should have secure wear paths. All cylinders, rod end shafts, and barrel end shafts are properly secured. Be sure there's evidence of proper lubrication. In addition to the daily walk-around inspection for the straight and articulating models, be sure to include the following as part of the daily inspection. Overall cleanliness. Check all standing surfaces for hydraulic oil spillage and foreign objects. The placards. Keep all information and operating placards legible, clean, and unobstructed. Cover them when spray painting or shot blasting to protect legibility. Ensure that copies of the Operators and Safety Manual, Operation and Safety Handbook, as well as the ANSI responsibilities are in the manual storage holder. Ensure that all preventative maintenance, including lubrication, has been performed on the JLG lift in accordance with the Operators and Safety Manual. Check the machine for unauthorized modifications. Modifications or alteration of an aerial platform shall be made only with prior written permission of the manufacturer. You should start each day with a full tank of fuel. Check for spilled or leaking fuel. Always shut down the engine and don't smoke or have any open flames when refueling. To avoid injury, do not operate the machine until all of the points we've mentioned have been inspected and corrected. Remember, modifications or alterations of a machine shall be made only with the prior written permission of the manufacturer. The S and A series boom lifts are equipped with control panels that use symbols to indicate control functions. Refer to your operators and safety manual or the legend located near the control panel for a listing of these symbols and their corresponding functions. A function check of all systems should be performed after the daily walk around inspection is complete. The machine must be positioned on a firm level surface in an area free of overhead and ground level obstructions. Read and obey all warning placards and operating instructions on the boom lift and in the operators and safety manual prior to operation. Do not operate the boom lift until you've done this. Before we begin to operate the JLG boom lift, we need to check that we have the proper personal protection equipment. JLG recommends approved headgear be worn by all operating and ground personnel. After all, your head becomes the highest point when operating a boom lift at all heights. Also, OSHA regulations require that all personnel in the platform of the boom lift wear approved fall protection devices. JLG recommends the use of full body harnesses with lanyard attachments, which became an OSHA requirement beginning January 1998. You're responsible for complying with all applicable laws and regulations, their exact wording and requirements as they apply to your work, and the personal protection equipment required to perform your work. Now, let's do a pre-operational check of the Model S from the ground controls. The ignition emergency stop. This is a two-position red mushroom-shaped switch that works in combination with the engine start auxiliary power switch to provide electrical power to the starter solenoid or the auxiliary power pump when placed in the on position. When pushed to the off position, the ignition emergency stop button disables the ignition of the engine and stops operation of the machine. The engine start auxiliary power. This is a three position switch that remains in the neutral position and must be held in the up position to start the engine or in the down position to activate the electrically operated auxiliary hydraulic pump. The switch must be released and returned to neutral when the engine has started or must be held down during operation of the auxiliary pump. The control station selector is a three position center off key activated platform ground select switch which supplies power to the control selected. When the switch is in the ground position, power is supplied to only the ground controls and not the platform. If platform is selected, only the platform controls will receive power. When in the center position, power is shut off to both control stations. It's a good idea to let the engine warm up completely before operating any function. To start the engine, turn the key of the select switch to ground. Position the ignition emergency stop switch to on. On machines powered by a Continental diesel engine, wait until the glow plug indicator light goes out. Push the engine start switch in the upward position until the engine starts. If the engine fails to start promptly, do not engage the start switch for an extended period of time. After the engine is started, check the ground control indicator panel for any illuminated engine distress indicator lights.
If any of them are on, shut down the machine and have the problem corrected before operating the unit. After the engine has warmed up, raise and lower the main boom by positioning the lift control switch up or down respectively. Check that the platform self-leveling system functions properly during raising and lowering of the boom. Raise the main boom before continuing the function check of the other controls. The boom telescope switch extends and retracts the boom. Move the switch in the desired direction as shown by the arrows on the control panel. Check for delayed movement of the fly section, indicating loose cables. Check the platform leveling override for proper operation. It should tilt the platform in the direction desired when positioning the switch as shown by the directional arrows. The platform rotator rotates the platform 90 degrees in both directions from the center line of the boom. If the machine is equipped with an articulating fly boom, check for smooth operation while raising and lowering it. Ensure the turntable lock is disengaged prior to checking the swing operation. To do this, locate the turntable lock on the turntable end facing the platform. Pull the snap pin from the lock pin and lift the lock pin up to unlock the turntable. Return the snap pin to the lock pin to hold the lock pin in the disengaged position. Important. Check to assure there is adequate clearance between the rotating superstructure and the other parts of the JLG lift or other obstructions so you can safely operate the lift without being pinned. Now, swing the turntable left and right a minimum of 45 degrees by using the swing control. Check for smooth operation. After returning the turntable to its starting position, lower the main boom. With the aid of an assistant to monitor the chassis out of level indicator light on the platform control console, manually activate the indicator light by compressing any one of the three tilt indicator mounting springs. If the indicator light does not illuminate, shut the machine down and contact a qualified service technician before continuing operation. This concludes our functional check of the ground controls of the S-Series boom lift. We'll now perform the functional check on the platform controls. Position the platform ground select switch to the platform position. Enter the platform, shut the gate and verify that it's securely latched. Do not walk on the boom to enter or leave the platform. Attach the lanyard of the approved fall protection device you're wearing to the designated attachment point. Set the emergency stop switch to the up or on position. Now the machine is ready for operation. The unrestricted capacity of JLG S and A series boom lifts is 500 pounds. This means that with a platform load of 500 pounds or less, the platform may be positioned anywhere the boom will reach. Know the total weight of yourself and your equipment before operation. Never exceed the rated capacity. Distribute the working load uniformly on the platform floor. A capacity indicator is provided on the platform control panel and illuminates the appropriate maximum platform capacity for any given platform position. Let's check the control lever and toggle switch operation before we start. All the control levers and toggle switches should return to the neutral or off position when released. Never slam a control lever positioned in one direction through neutral to the opposite direction. Always return the lever to neutral, stop, then move the lever to the desired position. Operate levers with a slow, even motion. The foot switch must be released when starting the engine from the platform controls. It must be depressed before any functions will operate. The foot switch is equipped with a time delay, which cuts off power to all functions if none are activated within seven seconds of depressing the foot switch. If this occurs, the foot switch must be disengaged and depressed again to restore power to the platform functions. Operate all controls with your foot off the foot switch to make sure no functions are operational. If the engine starts when the foot switch is depressed, or if any of the functions operate when the foot switch is not depressed, do not operate the boom lift until it's repaired. Do not remove, modify, or disable the foot switch by blocking or by any other means. The ignition emergency stop. 
This is a two-position, red mushroom-shaped switch that works in combination with the engine start auxiliary power switch to provide electrical power to the starter solenoid or the auxiliary power pump when placed in the on position. When pushed to the off position, the ignition emergency stop button shuts off the engine and stops operation of the machine. The glow plug indicator illuminates when the glow plugs are operating. It must go out before attempting to start the engine. This feature is only applicable for Continental diesel-powered machines. A push-type horn switch activates an audible warning device when depressed. A dual-axis joystick is provided for main boom lift and swing functions. Push forward to lift up, pull backward to lift down. Move right to swing right or counterclockwise and left to swing left or clockwise. The lift and swing functions may be selected in combination. Speed of the functions is reduced if a combination is chosen. Be aware of tail swing clearances when swinging the turntable to avoid contact with an obstruction or ground personnel. The boom telescope switch extends and retracts the boom. Move the switch in the desired direction as shown by the arrows on the control panel. A single action joystick is provided to control drive and steer. Push forward to drive forward, pull back to drive in reverse. The controller is proportional, allowing variable drive speed between fast and slow. The thumb activated rocker switch on the end of the handle is used to control steering. Push on the left side of the switch to steer left on the right side of the switch to steer right. When the boom is raised above horizontal, the high drive function will automatically be cut back to low drive. Do not drive with the boom above horizontal except on a smooth, firm, and level surface. Do not drive the machine on grades or side slopes exceeding those specified on the warning placard at the platform. Avoid any terrain which could cause the machine to tip over. Use extreme caution when driving in reverse when driving with the platform elevated, and when driving with any part of the machine within six feet of any obstruction. Check the directional markings on the frame with those by the drive controller. Before driving, make sure the boom is positioned over the rear axle. If the boom is positioned over the front axle, the steer and drive controls will move in the opposite direction to machine travel. Do not use high speed in restricted or close areas or when driving in reverse. Always post a lookout and sound the horn when in areas where vision is restricted. When driving in high speed, adjust the controller to low speed before stopping. Travel grades in low drive only. A function speed control provides variable speed control of all boom functions grouped together to the right of the speed control, which includes platform rotate, lower lift for A models, lower telescope for A models, articulating fly boom, and main telescope. The recommended operation of these functions requires use of two hands. Rotate the control counterclockwise to the slowest position. Select the function switch, and while holding the function switch on, rotate the speed control knob to the desired speed. To achieve a smooth stop, rotate the control back to a slow speed prior to returning the function switch to the off position. When you rotate the function speed control fully counterclockwise until a click is heard, this puts all controls, including drive, main lift, and swing into creep speed. This speed is used for more precise positioning of the platform when close to obstacles. A snail symbol is used in connection with a green indicator light to show when the creep function has been selected. The S models have a three position drive speed torque select switch. The forward position gives maximum drive speed the back position gives maximum torque for rough terrain and climbing grades. The center position allows the machine to be driven in its quiet mode. Check the platform leveling override for proper operation. It should tilt the platform in the direction desired when positioning the switch as shown by the directional arrows. The platform rotator rotates the platform 90 degrees in both directions from the center line of the boom. If the machine is equipped with an optional articulating fly boom, the control switch will raise and lower that boom. A toggle type auxiliary power control switch energizes the electrically operated hydraulic pump when activated. 
The switch must be held in the on position during use of the auxiliary power system. The auxiliary power system provides sufficient means to operate the basic machine functions to return the platform to ground level if the main hydraulic pump or engine fails. Do not operate more than one function at a time while under auxiliary power. Operation of more than one function could cause the auxiliary power system to be overloaded, causing damage to the system. This concludes the functional check of an S-series boom lift. Now, let's turn our attention to the differences in the functional check of an A-series boom lift, starting with the ground controls. Remember, let the engine warm up completely before operating any function. After the engine has warmed up, check the hydraulic limit switches. Raise, extend, retract, and lower the tower boom in that order by using the tower lift and telescope control switches. Check for smooth operation. If the tower lifts down with tower telescope out or telescopes with tower lift less than completely up, shut down the machine and contact a qualified JLG technician. The machine may become unstable if the tower boom switching is out of sequence. Raise and lower the main boom by positioning the lift control switch up or down respectively. Check that the platform self-leveling system functions properly during raising and lowering of the boom. The main boom telescope switch extends and retracts the main boom. Move the switch in the desired direction as shown by the arrows on the control panel. This concludes the differences in the functional check of the ground controls of the A-series boom lift. We'll now take a look at the differences in the functional check of the platform controls. A three-position center-off toggle switch is provided for tower lift. This positions the tower boom up or down and does not function if the tower telescope function has been extended. The tower telescope function is controlled by a three-position center-off toggle switch that has positions for extending and retracting the tower boom. This switch does not function if the tower lift has not been fully raised. Shut down the machine and do not operate it if the tower lift and telescope do not operate as we've just described. The main boom telescope switch extends and retracts the main boom. Move the switch in the desired direction as shown by the arrows on the control panel. The A-series boom lift has a two-position drive speed torque select switch. The forward position gives maximum drive speed and torque. The backward position allows the machine to be driven in the quiet mode. The rest of the platform controls for the A-series are similar to those for the S-series. Some general safety precautions must be followed during operation of a JLG boom lift. Maintain safe clearances from electrical lines and apparatus. Allow for boom sway, rock or sag, and electrical line swaying or sagging. The boom lift is not equipped with protection from contact with or proximity to an electrically charged conductor. Maintain a clearance of at least 10 feet or 3 meters between any part of the machine or its load and any electrical line or apparatus carrying up to 50,000 volts. One foot additional clearance is required for every additional 30,000 volts or less. Treat all overhead power lines as energized high tension wires. Precautions to avoid all known hazards in the work area must be taken by the operator and supervisor before starting work. The operator is responsible to avoid operating over personnel on the ground and to warn them not to work, walk, or stand under a raised boom or platform. Ensure that operators of other overhead and floor machines are aware of the aerial platform's presence. Disconnect power to overhead cranes. Position barricades on floor if necessary. Do not operate the machine unless it's been serviced and maintained according to the manufacturer's specifications and schedule. Do not operate the machine when wind conditions exceed 30 miles per hour or 48 kilometers per hour. Never operate or raise the boom when the machine is on a truck or other vehicle. When riding in or working from the platform, both feet must be firmly positioned on the platform floor. Do not use the drive function to position the platform close to obstacles. Use the telescope or swing instead. Watch for obstructions around the machine and overhead when driving. Check the travel path for persons, holes, bumps, drop-offs, obstructions, debris, and coverings which may conceal holes and other hazards. Do not drive the machine near pits 
loading docks, or other drop-offs. Keep non-operating personnel at least six feet or about two meters away from the machine during driving operations. When driving in high speed, adjust the controller to slow speed before stopping. Travel grades in low drive speed only. Be aware of stopping distances when traveling in high and low speeds. Before driving on floors, bridges, trucks, and other surfaces, check allowable capacities of these surfaces. No stunt driving or horseplay is permitted. Operation with the boom raised is restricted to firm level surfaces. Never place hands or arms in the tower boom or upright mechanism. Check clearances above, on the sides, and bottom of the platform when raising, lowering, swinging, and telescoping the boom. Never use the boom for any purpose other than positioning personnel, their tools, and equipment. Never move the machine or other objects by using the lift, swing, or telescope functions of the boom. Do not push or pull the machine or other objects with the boom while driving. Use only the chassis tie-down lugs to pull a stuck machine free. Never use the machine as a crane. Do not carry materials on the platform railing unless approved by JLG. Never walk the boom to gain access to or leave the platform. To avoid falling, use extreme caution when entering or leaving the platform above ground. Enter or exit through the gate only. The platform floor must be within one foot or 0.3 meters of an adjacent safe and secure structure. Allow for platform vertical movement when entering or leaving the platform. Transfers between a structure and the aerial platform expose employees to fall potentials. This practice should be discouraged whenever possible. Where transfer must be accomplished, to perform the job, two safety lanyards will be used. One lanyard should be attached to the aerial platform, the other to the structure. The safety lanyard that's attached to the aerial platform should not be disconnected until such a time as the transfer to the structure is complete. Never position ladders, steps, or similar items on the lift to provide additional reach for any purpose. Never attach wires, cables, or any similar items to the platform. Keep mud, oil, grease, and other substances clean from your footwear and the platform. This section provides information on the procedures to be followed and on the systems and controls to be used in the event an emergency situation is encountered during machine operation. Prior to operation of the machine and periodically thereafter, the entire operating manual should be reviewed by all personnel whose responsibilities include any work or contact with the machine. An optional emergency towing package is available. Emergency towing procedures are described in the manual. An integral part of this procedure is unbolting the hub disconnect caps and reversing them. Refer to the manual for full instructions. The ground control station is used for pre-operational check and emergencies only. It is located on the right front side of the turntable on the S and A series boom lifts. The controls on this panel provide the means for overriding the platform controls and for controlling boom functions from the ground. Place the key select switch to the ground position and operate the desired function switch. The auxiliary power system is used in the event of failure of the main power plant. A toggle type auxiliary power control switch can be found on both the platform control and ground control consoles. The auxiliary pump will operate boom lift, telescope and swing. To activate auxiliary power from the platform, first position the platform ground select key switch to platform. Pull the emergency stop switch. Depress and hold the foot switch. Operate the appropriate control switch, lever or the controller for the desired function and hold. Position the auxiliary power switch to on and hold. Release the auxiliary power switch, the selected control switch, lever or controller and the foot switch. Position the emergency stop switch to off. To activate the auxiliary power from the ground control station, position the platform ground select key switch to ground. Position the emergency stop switch to on. Operate the appropriate control switch or controller for the desired function and hold. Position the auxiliary power switch to on and hold. Release the auxiliary power switch and the selected control switch or controller. Position the emergency stop switch to off then turn the ground select key to neutral.
On certain S and A models, the manual descent system is used in the event of total power failure to lower the boom or booms. To operate the manual descent system on your JLG S or A model, locate the manual descent system and consult the instructions mounted on the machine and in the operator and safety manual. Know how to use ground controls in an emergency situation. Ground personnel must be thoroughly familiar with the machine operating characteristics and the ground control functions. Training should include a review and understanding of the operators and safety manual and hands-on operation of the controls and operation of the machine. To shut down and park the machine, the procedure is this. First, drive the machine to a well-protected area. Ensure the boom is lowered over the rear axle. Shut down the emergency stop at platform controls. Shut down the emergency stop at ground controls. Position the platform ground select switch to off and remove the key to prevent unauthorized operation. If necessary, cover the platform controls to protect instruction placards, warning decals, and operating controls from hostile environment conditions. It's important to complete your work safely using the JLG S and A series boom lifts. In order to do so, you must utilize common sense and the information provided in this presentation in the operator's manual and the decals and placards on the JLG S and A series boom lifts. We were not able to cover all optional features and configurations of all JLG S and A series boom lifts in this presentation. Therefore, if your unit is equipped differently than those shown in this presentation or in your operating manual, contact your authorized JLG distributor in your area or contact JLG Industries Incorporated for proper operating instructions at 877-JLG-SAFE or 877-554-7233. Written correspondence may be sent to JLG Industries Incorporated at 1 JLG Drive, McConnellsburg, Pennsylvania, 17233, attention, Product Safety and Reliability Department, or via email at productsafety at jlg.com.